Okay, um, good evening, everybody. We are, I am trying to, I am trying to uh, get the tip of the spear video ready to screencast. Um, hopefully, everybody's gotten an opportunity to look at the twin folder. Um, I think this is really, this is super important because to understand Donald Trump being the tip of the spear, and to fully understand it, you have to understand the government of the world and where the government started. And the government of the world started in the Garden of Eden. That's where the government started. And it was Satan's government that started in the Garden of Eden, um, the fall. And I want to show you guys some stuff. I'm going to show you the definition of the word government right here. And then I'm going to use the Bible to show you some other stuff that y'all should know for the video tomorrow. Government derived from the Latin verb governo, governare, meaning to control. And then the Latin noun mens, mentis, the mind. So government means to control the mind. That's what it means. And so <clears throat> I've shown you guys before but I know there's a lot of newcomers so I I'm sensitive to that and so I'm going to show you guys using the Bible and the Targum and let me under let me help you guys understand a couple things very quickly so let's see where my screen went okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to the Targum Jonathan is what the rabbinical teachers used when they would get around with the layman, you know, that to teach the Jews their religion. So they would use the Targum Jonathan and they would use the Pentateuch, the first five books of the, you know, the Bible. Uh, so, you know, Genesis, Exodus, <clears throat> I'm sorry. And the first five books of the Bible, <clears throat> sorry, the first five books of the Bible, they would use the Pentateuch and they would use the Targum. And so the lay people would sit around and the rabbinical teachers would sit there and read to them from the Targum and from the Pentateuch to teach them about their origins. Now I'm gonna to read to you from the Targum Jonathan in Genesis um, four, and then I'm gonna to go to Esword right here. This is Esword. I think everybody should have this resource. And this is Genesis four and it's in the King James plus right here you see right here this says kjv plus and the plus means it has added to it every single word in hebrew so i can look at the word adam and i can click on the word adam and the word adam um it comes from the word h120 and it means and if you cl left click on h120 human being hypocrite uh, and it shows the origin of the word Adam. See, Adam, Adam. And so then if I click this back button, it takes me back to, you know, this word Adam that's highlighted. And it shows right here that H120, Adam, the name of the first man, also a place in Palestine. Okay. Yep. Okay, so. Here we go. Hang on one sec. Okay, so what I'm going to do for y'all is I'm going to give you a little bit of an education because to understand Donald Trump being the tip of the spear, you need to know what he's the tip of the spear of. Otherwise, you know, I can show you all this incredible data, which you'll be going, oh my gosh, this is crazy. But if you don't have the foundation of some stuff, it, it won't make the complete impact that you'll know this is the end of the world, guys. I mean, I'm a harbinger. This is the end of the world. Not the end of the United States. Not the end of some error. It's the end of the world, okay? The final judgment, that's what's coming. The, you know, the, the great tribulation is at the door. The Antichrist is about to take his seat of power. And so I'm going to go through the actual Bible. This is the Bible right here and it's the bible plus 
the Hebrew equivalent of every single word. All you have to do is take your mouse and click on the word. And Adam knew Eve, Hava, uh, like there, Hava. Look right there. Look what, see, look, the word for Eve in Hebrew is Hava. Okay, so see if I click on the word Eve, you know, and so in, in English, you know, we were taught Adam and Eve, right? Well, if you're looking up the word Eve in Hebrew, the word for Eve right here, right there, I'll highlight that. I'll just do it the same color. So if I click on that, it's Hebrew word 232, uh, 2332, I'm sorry, and it means life giver Hava. Okay, so the name for Eve, the first woman. And then and when you click on the word wife, the word for wife is Isha Nashim, a woman, and it means adulteress. Um, so I've gone through and I've done all my Bible studies and I've done all my breakdown of all the words. And so I'm going to, I'm just going to give you everything I've already done and package it nice and neatly for you, make it real easy. But I suggest you go do it on your own. I suggest you get eSword. That's that's the program I'm using right here. It's called eSword. It's a free resource. Everybody should have this. You need to know what these words are in the original language. So I'm going to drop out eSword and I'm going to read to you from the Targum. Okay, the Targum was around before what we have is our Bible. You know, our Bible evolved all the books of the Bible over time. But we had, there was the Pentateuch. And so then after that, during the time of the Pentateuch, there was a Targum. And they, the rabbinical teachers would sit everybody around and read from the Pentateuch and from the Targum. So let me show you what the Targum says. And then we're going to compare the Targum to the Bible and the breakdown of the words in Hebrew. Okay, and then tomorrow, we're going to load up Donald Trump, the tip of the spear. And you guys are going to have an amazing education. So let's educate you. And Adam knew Hava, his wife, who had desired the angel. Because in Genesis 3, it says, And the serpent beguiled Eve. The word beguiled means seduced into having sex. And Adam knew Hava, his wife, who had desired the angel, and she conceived in bare Cain. She said, I have acquired a man, the angel of the Lord. And she added to bear from her husband Adam his twin, even Hable. So you can see that they got the word, and Adam knew Hava, Eve, his wife, who had desired the angel, which is the serpent, and she conceived, which is Lucifer, the serpent, and she conceived and bare Cain. She said, I have acquired a man, the angel of the Lord. That's, Cain is the devil in the flesh. That's, that's what he is. Cain's the devil in the flesh. And she added to bear. So she added to bear. That means she continued her birthing. She added to bear from her husband, Adam, his twin, even Hable. So Adam and Cain were twins, heteropaternal, superfecundation twins, dizygotic twins. You know, like Kahinde Wiley that did that marvelous presidential portrait of Barack Obama with two sperm, a big one and a little one. And yes, the little one is being engulfed by a serpent. So, Kehinde Wiley's painting is exactly in line with what I'm reading you right here from the Targum. Let's go look at the Bible itself. Let's go read the Bible now. Let's compare the Targum to the Bible, okay? So, the, the Targum says, she birthed the angel of the Lord, which is Satan in the flesh. And then she birthed, she added to bear, she added to bear from her husband, Adam, his twin, even Abel. So Cain and Abel, cannibal. So that's the name of the first two kids, Cain and Abel, cannibal. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. And don't forget the word government. The word government comes from guvernare, means to control the mind. Now, this would be a good time for me to switch and show you all something. Here is the Vatican right here, and it's the mouth of a serpent, just like in the Garden of Eden. And this serpent's wearing a crown. Now, 
we're going to take a helicopter and we're going to fly ta -ta 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 behind the crown. And then we're going to look from behind the crown. And there is the serpent now. We just, we went behind the crown of this right here. And then we went right here, and now we're looking this way. And there happens to be this perfect sidewalk that's in the shape of a split tongue. And I want to show you where this goes. The split tongue goes to these two twin buildings. One, I colored one pink and one blue. They're identical buildings like twins. And they're joined together in the middle by this building. And that is called the Palacio de Gubernare at the Vatican, the palace of the government. Because here's the serpent establishing the government of the world, truth and lies that come out of the same mouth. And now don't forget, the mouth of this serpent right here is this window on the inside of the altar. And if I take that window and I move it right up there, that's what you get. Now, remember that same mouth is also the mouth of, uh, well, that, that same window right here is a dead sheep. And when you turn this dead sheep upside down, it becomes the female reproductive system. Wow, that's just like it says in the Targum. And that's exactly what it says in the Bible for those that understand the Bible and know how to read it and actually have the Holy Spirit in them, which is the translator for the Bible, for the Word of God. And so I just proved, I just proved right now, right in front of you, I'm going to take this image of a penis, and I'm going to put it right up here. Watch. I'll enlarge the sheep. There is a dead sheep. I'm going to take this image of a penis and put it right where the chair is, right there. And then you can clearly see that this is a penis ejaculating the seed. And this is semen flowing down the side of the penis right here. And there's the seed, the crown, going into this open window, which is the mouth of the serpent right here, which established the government in the Garden of Eden, which is a twin system, one building, because this building is called the Palacio de Gubernare, the palace of the government, right here. And so, so truth and lies coming out of the same mouth. Okay, so here we go, and I'm going to go back and show you again. So let's go back to that other image. So here's the penis ejaculating the seed, the crown, into this open window. And this is semen running down the side of the penis. I'm sorry, but that's what it is. No, I'm not obsessed with it, but I can certainly see what it is. Just like I'm not obsessed with busting Kahinde Wiley. Okay, now here we go. So let's take this actual clinical drawing, anatomical penis drawing, and we'll take it and we will put it right up here, right there. I'll size it a little bit for you. And then we'll just take it, and there you go. And there's the penis shooting the seed into this open circle. Well, let's turn the sheep upside down because Isaiah said, those who try and hide their plants from the Lord, they turn everything upside down. So let's turn it upside down. So we take this, put it there, turn it upside down. And now we have the female reproductive system, ovary, ovary, fallopian tube, fallopian tube, uterus, cervix, clitoris, opening to the vagina, and this is all a bunch of pubic hair. That's a bunch of God's angels that are turning into semen because that's what happened to everybody. They got birthed into the flesh. Now let's take this fe this anatomical female, anatomical drawing, like from a, a book if you were taking a, a course to be a doctor. Let's take this drawing and let's go put it right over there. There you go. It's identical. So I just proved identically that this altar is a female vagina and it's a female reproductive system and when you look at it this way it's a male reproductive system male and female energy are opposites one gives one receives and there so there it is right there now here it is i showed you that twins are carried one right side up and one upside down in the womb 
So you got one that's right side up, one that's upside down, Cain and Abel, and you say it together and you get the word cannibal. And that's what's going on inside your head. Now, let me show you another picture from the Catholic Church. And this is the double-headed phoenix right there. Uh, so here's a double-headed phoenix. There's a cross under this. It's at the bottom of the page if you want to go look at it yourself. And so here's the head of one bird. Here's the head of the other bird. By the way, it's a female reproductive system. And so here we go. And here's DNA strip one making a V, DNA strip two going up to the crown. And there's the crown right on top. And that crown, you guessed it, is the head of a serpent. Let me size it. And then let me drag the head over there. I'll size it a little bigger. I want it to match perfectly. So you guys, there you go. So there is the head of the serpent ruling over the double, the twin system right there. And it is also manifest right there at the Vatican because the tongue of the serpent goes to a building called the Palacio de Gubernare. And the Palacio de Gubernare means to control the mind. Okay, so I just literally proved it. Now let's go to the Bible. And Adam knew Eve, his wife. Let's look at the word Adam. It's Adam, and it's the same as H120, which is straight out of Genesis 1, uh, when Elohim said, let us create man in our vain show. Let's go to Genesis 1. Genesis 1. And God said, let us make Adam. See, there you go. It means man. It means a human being. This is not Adam that God made. This is Adam that Elohim made. It means a human being, and it means a hypocrite. I just clicked on that to prove it. And look, let's look at the word God. Let's click on the word God. The word God is Elohim. It says Elohim. It means gods. It means of the supreme God. It is not the supreme God. It is of the Supreme God. I'll change the color to make it very poignant. There you go. It means of, Elohim is of the Supreme God. It means gods, it means angels, and it means magistrates right there and judges. And it's so God's angels and magistrates said, let us make a human being a hypocrite in our image. And the word for image is Selem. And the word image means a phantom that is figuratively an illusion. So a bunch of angels, a bunch of uh, gods, uh, and again, gods. There it is. I'll just hover it over, over it. It says gods, gods of the supreme god, angels and magistrates said, let us make a human being hypocrite in our vain show. Uh, look, a phantom, that is figuratively an illusion, hence a representative figure, especially an idol. Now, let me tell you something. If any of y'all think that the Lord God made man in his image, and his image is a vain show, you're delusional. The Lord God is not a vain show. The Lord God is not a representative figure, especially an idol. Does anyone know the Ten Commandments? I do. I'll quote commandment number two off the top of my head. I am the Lord your God that led you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall not make for yourselves any graven image or any likeness of anything in the heavens, the earth, or under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, and I will visit the iniquity of of the fathers to the third and fourth, genera fourth generations of those that hate me. So if you make an idol, you hate God. If you're an idol maker, you hate the Lord God. I am the Lord your God that led you out of Egypt, the house of bondage. So there it is. So here it is. So a bunch of angels, a bunch of Elohim, gods that are of the supreme God, angels and magistrates, said, hey, let us, which is plural, make man a human being hypocrite in our Salem phantom image that is figuratively an illusion, hence a representative figure, 
especially an idol, vein show. I'm going to highlight vein show, another color. I want it to be bright blue so you can see it yourself. And I'm going to change that color to a blistering bright blue. So angels said, let us make a human being hypocrite in our, which is plural, image, vain show. Representative figure, especially an idol. So they created a host body system that was a vain show. There it is. I mean, just use the Bible to prove it. I mean, I just broke down every word. So God, Elohim, created them. So God's angels and magistrates created man, a human being hypocrite, in his own image, phantom, that is an illusion, hence a representative figure, especially an idol and a vain show. And he did create them male, uh, a male of man animals as being the most noteworthy sex, and female, female from a sexual form, female woman. So if you think that's the Lord God, you are incorrect. I will go to Genesis 2 and show you that the Lord God created Adam. That's why the word Lord is in front of the word God, because the Lord God is not Elohim. He is the self-existent Jehovah Elohim, and he is not Elohim. He is the Lord God. He is not Elohim. He is the self-existent or eternal Jehovah Elohim. There is a huge difference, and he created Adam and Eve and put them in the garden, and this was the fall was already a done deal. And the Lord God formed Adam. Look at this, formed. It means as a potter forms clay, which is in Isaiah 29, 15, and 16. And it means, and then let me get this, sorry, going again. I got to fix something. And he said... The Lord God formed right there at Lick. Identical with 3334, as in squeezing to narrow, figuratively be in distress, through squeezing into shape to compare to mold to form, especially as a potter. So he formed man as a potter out of the dust. Watch this. This is important. The word dust, I want you to see the word dust. I'm going to highlight it, dust, and then I'm going to show you what it means. It means clay. It doesn't mean dust. It says dust as powdered or gray, but it actually means clay. So the Lord God formed another man, a human being, Adam. See, there it is. And the Lord God formed another type of man, Adam, a human being hypocrite, from the dust of the ground. There. He doesn't say he created him. It says he formed him from the dust. Back in Genesis 1, it says, it doesn't say the Lord God. It says, God's angels and magistrates said, let us create, let us make. Let us make man in our vain show. Okay, so there it is. It's proven. It's a done deal. Now let's go to Genesis 4 and knock this ball out of the park. And Adam, and it says the same as H120, which I just showed you. So let's go reverse engineer it. Okay, and Adam, which is 121, it goes back to a human being hypocrite. Knew Eve, his wife, Eve, Hava, his wife, adulteress, because she had already had sex with the serpent. And she conceived, it means to become pregnant, conceive literally or figur figuratively. And she conceived, and here it comes, and she bare Cain. Now, I'm going to go back. It means Kajin, the name of the first child. And we're going to go backwards on Cain. And it means to, in the sense of fixity, as a lance or a spear. 
Oh, wait a minute. As a spear. Isn't that what I showed you? Okay, so you have to understand that the tip of the spear in the Garden of Eden was a penis right there, and it went into the vagina of Eve, and that was the spear tip. That was the tip of the spear. That penis went into that vagina and impregnated her with the devil in the flesh, Cain. Now let's go back to Esau. Okay, and so Adam knew Hava's wife, the adulteress. There it is, a woman adulteress. It's the same word as woman in Genesis 3. And she got pregnant and bare Cain. Okay, Kajin, the name of the first child. And it means in the original sense of fixity, because when a penis and a vagina go together, that is the sense of fixity. They become in a fixed position as a lance, as striking fast, a spear, and said, I have gotten a man. Now look, the word for man back in Genesis 1, just so you all want to be perfectly clear, the word for man is Hebrew word 120. It is a human being, a hypocrite. It's H120. But here in Genesis 4, when she said she got Cain, she said, I have gotten a man. Look at the number for man. It is not H120, it's H376. It says a man as an individual or male person, a champion. And then we'll go to the root word. And it means a mortal single, singularly or collectively. And then it means especially when used in opposition with another word, it means bloodthirsty. And then let's go to the origin of the word, 605. And it means to be frail, feeble, melancholy, desperately wicked, incurably sick, woeful. Let's So let's go backwards now. So I have gotten a frail, feeble, melancholy, desperately wicked, incurably sick, woeful, mortal, bloodthirsty, male champion. That's what that's what the word man means right there. It's certainly not H120 from the Lord. And again, she bear. Okay, so now people are like, oh no, they were different births. No, they weren't. It's the same birth. It says, and again, she bear. Let's look at the word again. It means to add or augment, to continue to do a thing. So she continued her birthing process to continue to do a thing. So again, she bear, and it means to bear young, to beget, to birth, his brother Abel. Abel, see, there it is. Abel, the son of Adam. So here you got the son of the devil, and here an incurably sick, bloodthirsty, uh, desperately wicked man. There it is. I just proved it. I'm sorry, back here. Three, 376, there, and there. Uh, she got a fail, feeble, melancholy, desperately wicked, incurably sick, woeful, mortal, singularly or collectively, bloodthirsty, man of the male's, male person, a champion, so that's what Cain was from the Lord. And again, and again she bare. So she added or augmented to continue a thing. She continued her birthing process. She added to bear his brother. It means a brother used in the widest sense of a literal relationship and metaphorical affinity or resemblance because they weren't, they were two different things. And it means uh another you call him a brother if you want a resemblance they both came out but they were in opposition to each other and she buried his brother abel abel the son of adam there you go so i just used the bible and i just broke down the words in esword and when you look at the targum it is exactly 
what it says. And this is the fall. And so I'm going to enlarge it and we're going to read it one more time because this began the government of the world. And Adam knew Hava's wife. We just saw that. And Adam knew Eve, Hava, his adulteress, his wife that was an adulteress woman. And there it is. The word wife, I and I quote, it, it is wife, 802, Hebrew word 802, a woman adulteress. And Adam knew his wife because she had already had sex with the serpent. And she conceived and bare Cain, a bloodthirsty, incurably sick, woefully, desperately wicked man from the Lord. And again, she bare his brother Abel. Okay, and so let's go back to the Targum. And Adam knew Hava, his wife, who had desired the angel because she had sex with the Lucifer and she conceived and she bare Cain, said, I have acquired a man, the angel of the Lord, an incurably sick, desperately wicked, woeful champion, bloodthirsty. And she added to bear from her husband, Adam, his twin, even Abel. So I just used the Targum and the Bible and proved to you Adam and Eve. Uh, that uh, Cain and Abel were twins. And that's why the word Cain and Abel, when you put it together, is cannibal. And so there you go. So let's look at the twin system again. So there we go. And now I'll go backwards in the twin folder, and I will use the Word of God, because I always come with the Word of God, because the Word of God is God. It is the Word made flesh, which is Jesus Christ. In the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the word became flesh. Okay, so anyway, so here it is. Cain and Abel, one right side up, one upside down. And this is the system that's going on inside your head. There's a good you and there's a bad you. And there's one that's vampiring the other one and destroying you. And that's why they like to use the W to make fun of you. Because when you take five, the Roman numeral five, and the Roman numeral five, a V and a V, it makes a double U. Get it? Double U. And that's why even the Twin Tower, even the One World Freedom Tower logo, it's a right side up, upside down building. See, upside down, right side up, one. And I'll take that logo and I'll shove it right up onto Cain and Abel because the two have become one. There you go. And that's why when you have the Catholic Church, and here it is right there. There's the cross right under. This is right out of the Catholic Church. And here's the crown of the serpent connecting the two Vs, the W, both heads, Cain and Abel. And when you slide the serpent over, he rules over the duplicitous system. And that's why there is a, a wine company called the Prisoner Wine Company. Look at the W. Look at the W. Oh, wow. Because the W is the same as this W right here. And I will drag that W right on top of the Prisoner Wine Company. Why'd you name your wine company the Prisoner Wine Company and put two intersecting V's? Because they like to do that to make fun of you. Because when you intersect two V's, it makes a double U. Like a good U and a bad U. Like a... Cain and enable you. So again, now let's look at the the way Jesus fixed the problem because there were there were three people crucified that day, two thieves. There was a guy that was good. There was a guy that was bad, Jismus and Desmus. This guy represented good. He admitted he was at fault. He admitted he deserved to go into the pit. He admitted he deserved his punishment. This guy did not admit anything. And Jesus stands in the middle connecting the two. He himself is our peace. I'm going to read to you. I'm going to go to. I'll go to Ephesians 2 to prove it. Ephesians 2. And here you go. For he is our peace. Jesus. Who has. Here, let's do it big. Who has made both one. Let's see. There you go. He himself is our peace. There he is. Jesus, right there in the middle, who has made both one. Uh, this guy and this guy. Let me reduce it in size. Because he takes the double U, the good U and the bad U that's in one body, and he makes 
the bad you and the good you come together as one, and he reconciles both, who has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, kind of like that image of twins, because there is a middle wall of partition, just like in your brain, who has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, and his having abolished in his flesh the enmity, by the way, that word enmity is in Genesis. Let's go look at the word en enmity in Genesis. Okay, we'll go to Genesis 3. Because you have done this, there I will put enmity. And because thou hast hearkened to the voice of the light. Wait, hang on one sec. And God said, I I will put enmity, there's that word enmity, hostility and hatred. I will put enmity between thee and the woman. What does that say? Woman adulteress, because she had sex with the serpent, and between thy seed and her seed. There you go. So there's the two different seeds and Here's what they look like on the cross right here. Here's what the two different seeds look like. There's an evil seed inside of you, and there's a good one. There's a sheep, and there's a, and there's a reptile. And the sheep and the reptile are reconciled by Jesus in the middle. And his purpose was to destroy that enmity from the Garden of Eden, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of the two, the twain, of the two, one new man, so making peace. Because that he might reconcile, look, both unto God in one body by the cross. And I'm going to show you that. There it is. There is Jesus reconciling both the good you and the bad you. He's reconciling the double you unto God through the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. I just used the Bible and proved it. Using an image of Christ on the cross and prove to you that there's a double you, there's a good you and a bad you, there's a right side up you and there's an upside down you. And until you flip that one eye that's bad the right way, you cannot come together and be one. Because one of your eyes is like this and one's like this and you got to make your eyes single, then the whole body's full of light. Because your eye is double. The Bible says, if your eye be single, the whole body is full of light. But you're not full of the light because you got one eye that's one way, one the other way. And until you flip it and your eye becomes single, you are in darkness. There you go. Okay, so now I wanted to show you this because to understand Donald Trump and to understand Donald Trump being the tip of the spear, you got to understand the government from the beginning of the world. The mind control, the mind control. Who controls the mind of man? The devil controls his mind. The serpent controls his mind. You want to? You want me to show you? There you go. There's the serpent controlling the mind of man, controlling the double-headed phoenix, controlling the twin system, controlling the Cain and Abel, controlling the double you. He controls it, and Jesus, his purpose was to fix the double you, to, to reconcile the bad you and the good you through the cross, destroying the enmity between the two of you, making one new man in Christ and forgiving your sins. That's why they bombed the Twin Towers, because they represented double DNAs. They represented Cain and Abel. They destroyed them. They sacrificed all those people. And in their place, they put the One World Freedom Tower. And that's what they put in the place of the twins. And that's why on the observation deck of this giant building that replaced the twin system right here through the Arch of Washington, the apotheosis, they put on the floor a cross and they put a W. And look what's on top of the W holding them together, the freaking pyramid, because this is ancient Egypt. 
this is literally you're literally in ancient Egypt but it's just been modernized there it is okay there you go so there's the observation deck there is one V and another V joined together by a pyramid in a circle right in front of a cross and that's the observation deck of this building right here now here's the thing back in the garden the serpent established that there was a twin system and this is the palazzo de gubernare mind control that's why the mouth of the tongue of the serpent goes to this building well let me show you something interesting i'll just slide this up there and there you go palazzo de gubernatore Tarato in Vaticano right here. And let's take a look at the, the Capitol building. Wow, the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. has one building over here that's identical to a building over here with a building joining the two twins together right in the middle with a dome on top with a woman on top. Wow, the CIA building is the same. It's got one building over here and another building over here that's identical, joined together by another building in the middle. Oh, just like the twin serpent system. Oh, just like the twin serpent system. And Donald Trump was chosen by God to be the tip of the spear to puncture their lies and their deceit and their mind control over the mind of humanity that has been taken captive by them. And by the way, there's a word I would like to show you guys, and it's the word Democrat. And if you do a little due diligence and you look up your definitions of words, which I do, let's see. That's where it won't. Seems to be having a little bit of a problem here. Let me, uh, there you go. Let's look at Democratis. Let me show you something about the word Democrat, and all you got to do is do a little bit of study on words, and I'm going to just change that screen. Okay, you ready? Uh, who, who are the biggest liars in politics today? Uh, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Adam Schiff, uh, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton. I mean, they're all just a bunch of psychopathic liars, right? Right? Aren't they? Let's look at Democrat. Okay, here we go. From old Portuguese uh, demo, demon, devil, from Latin, daemon, demon, from ancient Greek, daemon, god, goddess, divine power. And kratis, Latin, uh, is uh, K-R-T-I-S compared to Greek, a kind of basket, fishing creel. Oh, because they're fishing for human souls uh, to weave, to twist together, you know, kind of like DNA. To compare to Sanskrit, K-R-T, to spin. To weave together. Oh, you mean like like this. Kind of like to weave together twins like DNA. There you go. There you go. One DNA woven together with the other one produces the One World Freedom Tower. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I wanted to make sure you guys understand that I've taken the U.S. Capitol building right here in Washington, D.C., I put a blue V on it and a red V on it. Identical buildings. Here's a Palacio de Gubernare in the Vatican. See the serpent tongue going to? I put a V on there and a V on there intersecting. And there is the CIA building with a red V and a blue V. Just so you guys can clearly identify that they all have a common denominator. They all have identical twin buildings joined together by a building in the middle. How unusual. Isn't that odd that they would all have the same basic building structure? Twin buildings joined together by a building in the middle. And it just so happens that a place that's in the shape of a giant serpent with its tongue sticking out happens to go to the Palacio de Gubernare at the Vatican. Uh, when, by the way, they're worshiping Eve. When they pray to the Virgin... And the reason they pray to the Virgin is because they worship Eve, because that's where they're getting all their energy from, from God's angels. Because y'all are a bunch of angels, and y'all got cast down, and that's what you're doing here. And Satan doesn't want one of you to get back home. 
The word be, Bible says be reconciled to God. Does anybody know what the word reconciled means? I mean, y'all, yeah, yeah. look, watch. I'll, I'll just do it live. I'll do it live in front of you. I'll type this in. Be reconciled to God. Okay, so be reconciled to God. Second Corinthians. Okay, so so all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. So all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ because the Lord God was Jesus Christ in the flesh. Look at the word reconciled, watch here. So let's look at let's look at that well you know what? Let me continue to read the scripture real quick. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ. So God came and saved his own children that had gotten carried away and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. Okay, so he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. Now watch. Now, this is really important that you understand this. If you don't believe you're, you're, you were an angel, then you don't understand the Bible. Because let me show you something. Just by definition of the word. Let's type in definition of reconcile. There it is. Reconcile means to restore friendly relations between she wanted to be, look, reconciled with her father. Well, isn't that what the Bible says? All this is from God who reconciled us back to himself through Christ. You cannot be reconciled to anybody that you were not intimately involved with before. You had to have an intimate relationship just by definition of reconcile. So if you're being reconciled to God, it's because you did something wrong and you breached the relationship and now you had to be reconciled back to your dad. And the only way that could happen is Jesus is your dad in the flesh that came to get you. Okay? It is impeccable logic. Synonyms. Settle one's differences. Make one's peace. Make up. Kiss and make up. Bury the hatchet. Declare a truce. Her divorced parents have reconciled. Because you cannot, you cannot be reconciled to anybody that you were not intimate with before. A friend, a wife, a father, you cannot be reconciled to anyone that you did not have a relationship with before. That's all there is to it. Okay, so now I needed y'all to understand this. If you want to understand Donald Trump being the tip of the spear, you have to understand the basic of where did the government of the world start? Well, it started in the beginning when a bunch of angels decided to make a host body, a human being, a hypocrite in their own vain show right there. And then God said, okay, if y'all want to do that, it's going to be a duplicitous system and you guys can reap what you sowed. And so then the Lord God, n not God, God did not create Adam. Look, he, the Adam that the Lord God formed and the Lord God, the self-existent eternal Jehovah God formed Adam from the dust. There you go. So, and this is where everything started. And once the fall of man occurred, and let me show you something very obvious. It said, so the serpent was talking to Eve. And now the serpent was the more subtle than the any beast of the field, which the Lord God, the Lord God had made. I'll just click on that. 
was he was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the fruit of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit which is in the tree in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Let me ask you a question. Can you eat something before you touch it? Maybe if you're bobbing for apples or something, or if there's uh, someone throwing peanuts at you, but you got to touch it to eat it. Let me show you something. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. So that, those were the orders. Look at what the word touch means. To lay the band on a, upon for any reason, euphemistically to lie with a woman. There you go. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. To strike like a serpent. There you go. To strike, to punish, defeat, destroy, etc. There you go. Okay, so I've used the Bible. I've used the breakdown of the words in the Bible. And I have shown you exactly that Genesis 4 in the Bible, when you break down the words, is absolutely unequivocally identical to the Targum Jonathan. And Adam knew Hava's wife who had desired the angel, the serpent. And she conceived and bare Cain, said, I have acquired a man, the angel of the Lord, the serpent in the flesh. And she added to bear from her husband Adam his twin, even Abel. Cain and Abel, cannibal. Because you are your own worst enemy. Your reflection is out to destroy you. Oh, wow. That's pretty wild. Look at that. <laughs> Look where that defaulted to. Wow. Okay, that's really fascinating. Looks like I'm being jacked with. Someone's hitting our server. Okay, so let's see if it does it on this one. Okay, so anyway, so here we go. This is going to be part of your education for tomorrow. I wanted to educate you because the the government that was started by the serpent in the garden, here it is. Here's a perfect representation of it. There's the serpent from the garden wearing his crown. There's his split tongue going to the halls of government, truth and lies. And there is uh, the same exact building right here. So I'll just take the serpent and I'll slide the serpent up. This is the halls of government at the Vatican. Uh, okay, there it is. And then here, hang on one sec. Let me, let me do this real quick. Okay. So here is the capital where Donald Trump is residing as president, and it has the same construction of identical buildings joined together with a dome over the middle right here. By the way, there's a dome right on top of that serpent's head right there. And if you look at the dome right here, there's a woman on top. And so here is an identical building, a blue V, just like the blue V here. There's a red V, just like the red V here joined together by this building with a dome with a woman on top. When, by the way, domes represent pregnancy. And I want to show you tomorrow that here is this same building right here. And when you have the, uh, the spiritual acuity that the Lord God gave me as a gift, which is for y'all, then you're able to see things very clearly that the whole thing is a bug. There it is. It's a giant bug like the locust from the pit. And we'll get into all that tomorrow. But you guys have a lot of pictures to look at tonight before we do this video. And one of my folders just defaulted. By the way, the largest altar in the world 
right there where that sheep is in the mouth right there, the mouth of that serpent right there, that's the window above the sheep, is a giant bug, which is tattooed on these girls' vaginas. Like this girl right here, there's the eye, there's the eye, there's the mandibles. There's the eye, there's the eye, there's the mandibles. Here's the antenna. Let's slide it right on top. Why does a girl have an identical uh, manifestation of the largest altar in the world? That's a bug. And by the way, that hole right there is the female reproductive system I already showed you. Why does this girl have the same exact tattoo? Because it's true. The, the opening to that female reproductive system happens to be a very deadly thing. And it started in the Garden of Eden. And it's kept going until this day. Because the male-female system are opposite energies. One gives, one receives. And that's why when I prayed our Father in the alley, I received the Holy Spirit when Michael walked up and said, pray with me, my brother. And we prayed our Father to a male figure. Water and light came down on me and I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And then if y'all know my personal testimony, then Michael said, now you say Hail Mary. And I, my testimony that the Lord made me put on YouTube, as I said the words to that prayer, Hail Mary, which is wrong. You don't pray to the Virgin. I was born and raised Catholic. But right after I got saved, I, I prayed our Father, and I was beaming with light. Then Michael says, you say Hail Mary. And I, for some reason, I knew it was wrong just because the new spirit that was in me. And I looked at him like, why? And he nodded his head. And as I said those words to that prayer, my testimony is I felt death. Oh, wow. That's funny. I just showed you where death came from. Death came from Eve. Because Eve is the one that fell first. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. And look, now the serpent said to the woman, look, And he said unto the woman, look at the word woman right here. Look at the word woman. I'll just highlight it. Let's click on it. What does it say? 802, a woman adulteress. By the way, I know my Hebrew pretty well. I've studied enough. There's a lot of other words for woman. There's many other words. Like, you know, when you talk about, when you're talking about Mary in the New Testament, there's other words for woman, maiden, pure, virginal woman. This word, Isha Nashim, it means adulterous woman. That's what it means. Because she was an adulteress. And it represents the enemy. And there it is. I'm showing it to you. I mean, you can't argue with that, can you? There you go. Adulteress. A woman. Adulteress. A woman adulteress. There it is. So anyway, so now y'all know that the government of the world that was established in the Garden of Eden, and by the way, I unfortunately I lost my twins folder, but the government that was established in the Garden of Eden was Cain and Abel, cannibal. You are your own worst enemy. You are your own cannibal. You self-cannibalize, autosarcophagy. That's what the Ouroboros is. The serpent eating its own tail. That's the Ouroboros. And that's the system you live in. And there's the largest altar in the world. There's that There's that bug. I'll take this bug and slide it right over on it. On that altar. And then bam, there it is. The largest altar in the world is a bug. And the mouth of the bug is a vagina. And here's a girl with the same bug on her vagina. Here's another girl with the same bug on her vagina. There you go. So I just proved it. Doesn't take much. And again, just to prove, there you go. That, this altar right here, this vagina opening, this vagina opening right here is that window right here in the mouth of this bug. I'll slide it over right there. There it is. There it is. I'll take the dead sheep, which represents you. 
I'll slide it over, and the window that's right there above the head of the sheep is right there. And you know what that window is, don't you? That window is this, which is the opening to the vagina right there. So that means we can slide this right over to there. And so that's how the locusts from the pit get their food. That's how they get their food right there. That's how the locusts that are going to come out of the pit get their food. And that's the government of the world. All glory to God. Pretty brutal, huh? Donald Trump, graduating from the New York Military Academy, is front and center right here. He was destined to be the tip of the spear. He didn't know he would be the tip of the spear. Just like I myself didn't know that my skydiving career or my sunglass career would play such an important part of my life once I got saved. I had no idea, but once I got saved, my entire life that I lived was a witness to who I am now. So, that's why I'm always falling out of the sky upside down. You know what? Let's see if we can see a quick picture of that. You know what? Since we're here, let's just see if we can see a quick picture of what I'm talking about. There we go. If you want, you can go to the whole story start to finish. I, uh, I ended up with a sunglass company called Vlad Eyewear Vampire Sunglasses. I ended up with a trademark that another company forgot, forgot to do their continued use statement on. I married a girl named Eleutheria, Eleuthera. Uh, the Bible says the earnest expectation of the creature anxiously awaits anxiously awaits the glorious liberty of the sons of god um you know what i butchered that a little bit i'll go to i'll go to romans 8 and show you what it means as long as i'm doing this let's just have some fun let's freak out romans 8 let's do it romans 8 uh you know what let's do it in esword romans 8 watch this freak out wonder what the odds of this are there we go romans a. There we go. Because the creature, which is us, the creature was made subject to vanity. Oh, you mean like Genesis uh, 1, 26, I think, a vain show. The creature itself was made subject to vanity, um, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Let me show you the word liberty. It, it, it is Eleuthera, and that happens to be the name of my wife that I married that was with me the night I got saved. She was my girlfriend. There she is, Eleuthera. And the word Eleuthera means... Legitimate or licentious freedom. Now watch this. So, just in case somebody doesn't know what licentious means, we will do this. We will back that out. And we will go backwards. And I will drop this in. And licentious means promiscuous, unprincipled in sexual matters. Um, you know, like depraved, sinful, corrupt, naughty. You know, like sex is like no big deal. It's like normal. Like having sex and not being married and is like just a lot of fun. Naughty, licentious. Okay, so that's what licentious means. So now let's go back to Esword. So the creature, which is us, we're the creature. Remember the Jaguar commercials I showed you? We've already created a beast. It's time for a whole new animal with a ruthless that's more ruthlessly efficient using the same potent DNA. Uh, Jaguar commercial. So the creature, which is us, we're awaiting to be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty 
of the children of God. Because when we become children of God again, those who are worthy of the resurrection are equal unto the angels because we get to go back to being angels. And the liberty we get is we can have legitimate or licentious freedom. Okay, well, let me show you something really amazing. The Bible says you will know the truth. You will know the truth. And the truth, oops, let me fix that. You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Okay, so that takes you to John 8.32. Let's go to, now remember, what, what are we waiting for? We're waiting for the glorious liberty of the children of God, which means legitimate or licentious freedom, see? Freedom, legitimate or licentious. Okay, so we're waiting for that. And we're waiting for our adoption and the redemption. Watch this. The redemption of our body. Watch. See? We're waiting to, for the adoption to it. The redemption. The redemption. The ransom in full. The ransom in full and the riddance because we get rid of this stupid body we're in and the redemption of our body the body which is made us a slave because your body is what makes you a slave by the fact that you're in the flesh means you're a slave you're a slave to sin you're a slave to lucifer because you're in a body because if you have a host body you're a slave because you're born into slavery which is your host body. And I just use the Bible to prove it. Okay, so now watch. So we're waiting to get out of our body because we are the creature and we're waiting for the glorious liberty of the children of God because those who are worthy of the resurrection are equal unto the angels because you've been reconciled. You made up with dad, which is your God in heaven, and you get to go back home to heaven, just like the prodigal son gets to return home. Okay, so here you go. And we're waiting for the redemption of our bodies. But you'll know the truth. Now, remember, what's the word liberty? Eleuthera. Eleuthera. Legitimate or licentious freedom. And I chose, obviously, I chose licentious freedom. There's one of the girls I was dating before. I dated, I got together with my wife. This is the other girl I was dating and then I married my wife after a long string of dating a lot of girls. And then I married Eleuthera, and she represented licentious freedom for me in my life. And I chose that, obviously, before I got here. But the Bible says you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Remember this word, Eleuthera, okay? Eleutheria from Greek, okay? Now, John 8.32 John 8, verse 32. You Now, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, Logos, you are then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, which is what I'm trying to show everybody, and the truth shall make you free. Oh my gosh, it's Eleuthero. Oh my gosh, wait a minute. So the night I got saved, I was inside a hotel with Eleuthera, and I was like, Lord, tell me what to do. He was saying, open the door, Jonathan. Go out the door. Leave. And if I walked out that door, it meant I was probably going to get killed by the people that were there at the end of the alley to do us harm. And the Lord said, open the door. And I had Eleuthera saying, don't open the door. And I said, Lord, tell me what to do. Open the door. And I had my girlfriend, Eleuthera saying, don't open the door. We don't know who those people are. And so Eleuthera is saying, don't open the door, Jonathan. And the Lord God is saying, Jonathan, open the door. 
And I said, the Lord's saying, open the door. And she's going, don't open the door. And I said, Lord, tell me what to do. And the Lord says, open the door. And I push the door open. I go outside. And I go out on the back of that hotel. And I go down this counterweighted set of steps. Boom. And they hit the ground. And when they hit the ground, an angel steps up and he says, pray with me, my brother. And he comes alongside and he leads me in a prayer. Our Father male figure our father who art in heaven we're praying to my dad to reconcile me back who art in heaven hallowed be thy name i pray to our father and i received the holy spirit and i was filled with light you will know the truth and the truth will set you free look at the word for free look at it what does it say eleuthero oh it's a masculine version of freedom eleuthero it means to liberate, to exempt from moral, ceremonial, or look, mortal liability. Praise God. I walked out that door away from, I walked away from Eleuthera, and I went back to Dad, Eleuthero. I knew the truth, and the truth made me Eleuthero made me free. It liberated me. It made me exempt from moral ceremony, ceremonial or mortal liability. The Lord God delivered me and set me free. And he made me your end time harbinger. And I'm here to tell you time's up. Pretty riveting, huh? <laughs> riveting! <laughs> My whole life's been a manifestation. My entire life has been a manifestation of the Bible. Jonathan means Yahweh is given. Kleck means a town crier, a messenger that rings a bell and gathers the church. I'm trying to gather the church of Philadelphia. Let's get out of here, man. Anyway, so that's why an angel stepped up and said, pray with me, my brother. Well, because he's my brother, I'm an angel. Y'all are angels too, but the demons don't want you to know your identity. You have an identity crisis. There's a good you, and there is a bad you. There is a double you. Get it? There is a good you, and there is a bad you. There is a double you and they're making fun of you all day long those that rule my people mock them says the lord okay so there's your bible study to get you ready for tomorrow tomorrow begins the tip of the spear and we are just about ready to see the lord god see all those red gladiolas behind me the lord god had me get those today and it was supernatural the way those flowers ended up in this house. I mean, literally impossible. You know what the word gladiola means? He told me to look it up. I looked it up a while back. Gladiola means sword. You see the red gladiolas back there? They're red. Gladiolus, there's a gladiola. It comes from the Latin word gladius, like gladiator, which means sword. So I have a bunch of red swords, and the Lord told me that I'm supposed to play for y'all Ezekiel 7. So let me go ahead and do what he said. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be obedient. The Lord told me that I should play Ezekiel 7. And let you guys hear it. And let, okay, so I had a little glitch. Let's do Ezekiel seven, like I was told. Ezekiel seven. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also, thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, an end. The end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee 
and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, An evil, an only evil, behold, is come, and end is come, the end is come, it watcheth for thee, behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land, the time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee. And I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day, behold, it is come. The morning is gone forth, the rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs, neither shall there be wailing for them. The time is come, the day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn. For wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return. Neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet, even to make all ready. But none goeth to the battle. For my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence, shall devour him. But they that escape of them shall escape, and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces and boldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty. But they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein, Therefore have I set it far from them. And I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place. For the robbers shall enter into it and defile it, make a chain. But the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts will I judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Okay, so, I find it fascinating that Absolutely fascinating. Hang on. I find it fascinating that I have these red gladiolas that uh, it was just, the story is just so crazy supernatural how I ended up with them today. And then 
the Lord told me to read Ezekiel 7 to everybody, so I had Max McLean read it. The word gladiola means sword. It means sword. Those are red swords. Just think about it. And I'm reading Ezekiel 7. And in Ezekiel 7, it's all about the end has come, look, look. And in the end has come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee. I will send my anger. I shall not spare. Um, the end has come. The end has come. Uh, it's just the end has come. The end has come. The end has come. The end has come. The sword. I mean the sword. The gladiola. I mean I have gladi red gladiolas back there guys. I mean this is pretty heavy duty stuff. This is serious stuff. This is the Lord warning everybody. Get ready. I hope you're right with the Lord. So I'm going to do the Donald Trump tip of the spear video. So you understand that Donald Trump is the tip of the spear that's being used to pierce the enemy's government mind control. Everybody's waking up noticing, oh, wow, there are a bunch of liars. Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Eric Holder, and Rice, uh, you know, um, uh, Adam Schiff, I mean, goodness gracious, Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, all of them. I mean, Democrats, Republicans, but, you know, Donald Donald Trump is pierced through their defenses, and you can see that the lies and the filth that is running the government, the mind control. And I showed you the images of the buildings that they're the same. And tomorrow we're going to do more of that. And I'm going to deliver the goods to show you how Donald Trump was predestined to be who he is. So was I. I was predestined to be who I am. We all are. So anyway, so all glory to God. Um, I'll, I, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And uh, we'll do the tip of the spear video tomorrow. Um, I wanted to get this out. Give you a little more background, a little more education, a little more knowledge so you understand what the tip of the spear is doing. Donald Trump's the tip of the spear to puncture their defenses and their lies and all that. But the Lord's using Donald Trump. But here comes here comes the end. The end is coming. Okay, anyway, I'll explain more tomorrow. All right.